Next, a curious world of experimental music created with both instruments and everyday objects. Let's take a listen to Dr Matt Shu's obscure orchestra. Hello, my friends. My name is Cal, and amongst many things, I am a stroke survivor, I'm also queer, and I live with invisible disability. So suffice to say, I have a pretty good understanding of what it's like to feel obscure in society. I also have a pretty good understanding of what it's like to want to obscure yourself from society. So who better to talk to about all things obscure than the founder of the Obscure Orchestra, Mr. Matt Chu. So I play something like 20 instruments, and then it gets to a point where it's like, are chopsticks an instrument? Is like bashing two pillows together to create like a sort of cloud floof noise an <laughs> instrument? The, the sounds are endless. Hello. Hello. How are you? Welcome Let's do to the neighborhood. It. Yeah. Matt, thank you so much for coming. Thanks, Cal. To, to, for having me here. Yeah. yeah, pleasure. I want to know, what does the word obscure mean to you? I guess it means just celebrating difference. I've always grown up kind of like receiving touches of racism. A lot of my adolescence was about trying to, I guess, suppress the Asian-ness. I've always felt like there was a cliche or a stereotype that Asian kids were like really studious, yeah, yeah. kind of nerdy. Like, Show us your piano skills. <laughs> yeah. Just tried to distance myself from Asian-ness. I, I refuse to speak Mandarin at home. That's for long, because there's, there's a notion of obscuring yourself. How is that, you know, now it's like, da 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 da, da obscure orchestra. Like, yeah. how did that come about? Right. So the obscure orchestra started as a kind of solo experimental project. What has now become a 22 piece um, ensemble. made up of people of different diversities, different backgrounds. We've got non-binary, trans, queer artists. We've got people with refugee backgrounds, people living with disabilities, people um, that are First Nations. Just a whole bunch of different people with different experiences coming together, playing music, loving it. What about the Obscure Orchestra has made you feel safe to express. It was only like a few years ago that I started calling myself disabled. Um, and you have like a lot of shame about it and you feel very uncool <laughs> and people talk down to you and it can be paternalistic and it's just, it's really hard, but all the people in the orchestra who don't see it that way at all, they just see you as a person and what you can bring. Yeah, I'm not a singer, but I feel comfortable enough with everybody around and like kind of emboldened um, to have that confidence to sing in front of everybody. It's very scary. But, but yeah, like it brings me like confidence in other things. Thank you, Sophie. Sophie and I got together and we were talking about like radical accessibility. Essentially, it's the psychosocial and physical barriers to society yeah. that disable people from participating in community life. Yeah, that's right. And I've seen some of Sophie's stuff and I'm just like, how yeah. do you play in the orchestra? I know, yeah, she's, she's like fully renegade when it comes to those things. There is no one more qualified on my disability than me. I will continue to complain every week until my voice is heard. You talked before about that paternalistic approach that a lot of society has for people with disability, that there's through this kind of ableist kind of lens, there's a lot of infantilizing that happens for people with disability. How do you use your art to push back against that? I'm trying to subvert expectations about what I can do um, on a very grand scale, very bright and colorful. Um, and I'm making stuff because I can, not because I should. What comes first? Is it the art or the activism? The art, obviously. I do the activism stuff because you have to. Like, I don't 
enjoy doing the advocacy stuff, right? You're making yourself be quite vulnerable.、Mm. And the things I'm talking about are quite serious. It takes a lot out of you.、Mm. I'd rather be making art. <laughs> How does the sense of feeling obscure and then the sense of wanting to obscure yourself play out in your art form? So, for me, feeling obscure, that was, I guess, speaking to parts of my identity that I didn't really think about very often or、um, I guess liked to think about because I've tried、um, for a long time to really feel like I fit in and, and not point out my differences. And, Joining the Obscure Orchestra has really helped me, I guess, understand more about myself than any other creative project that I've really been a part of. What about for you, Cole? <laughs>、um, yeah, I think being obscure is something that has been、uh, used、um, against me a lot of my life or against like, others、um, who have had similar experiences. And I mean that in terms of living as like, a neurodivergent person and being non binary, that that has presented. Itself,、uh, I think, to a lot of people as seeming odd, seeming strange, seeming weird, all these descriptors that have such negative connotations to them,、uh, and they're simply just the result of things that are part of my identity.、Uh, so, coming to the obscure orchestra and obscuring that part is like a reclamation of that obscurity. You are clearly helping people find a safe space to express themselves. How do you see the future for the Obscure Orchestra? So, that I wrote a, a little lyric in a song. It goes, I don't want fame, I just want to make stuff at my own pace. So, it's not about like getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more successful. It's just about like creating, I don't know, a little bit of space where we can craft stuff, take our time with it, make things we're proud of. And when we're ready, You know, show, show the world or parts of the world, like, this is what we made, what do you think? Hey, hey, hey.